Thanks for tuning in to the Tip on Tuesday. Today I'm going to talk about loop knots used on a topwater. So the main time I use um, loop knots is on top waters and as you can see here I got a uh, Yozuri banana boat just to show you guys basic loop knot tied on and I got another banana boat here with a uh, clinch knot tied on and the main reason I use them on top waters is it gives the, the lure really good motion you know this you know this knot is free to move I'll try to get a good picture for you guys here it's free to move like that on the lure so there's not always a solid connection, meaning this lure can kind of move a little more freely. Um, whereas with the clinch knot, you know, there's there's always a solid connection there. And so you're always going to have a little bit of drag coming off the nose of the lure here because it's, it's always on the line there. Um, so it's kind of going to restrict the movement a little more. And that might just be me being picky, um, but I think it affects it. You know, when I'm fishing, I, I, I can definitely tell a difference when I've got a loop knot tied on versus when I've got a clinch knot tied on and and like I said just when using top waters it kind of gives it that exaggerated you know if I'm walking the dog with the lure it gives it that exaggerated walk the dog motion because that lure is able to kind of slide freely um, with that knot there and it doesn't always have that drag pulling on it straight forward so it can more cut to the side or cut to the side whereas with like a clinch knot you know, I mean, yeah, the lure can cut to the side, but it's, it's going to have a little bit of drag as it cuts to the side. It's going to have a line pulling at it as it cuts to the side, and it's not as free to do so. So when using a, a loop knot, I get a bit more of a little bit of a exaggerated motion. Whether or not you want that or not, that's what you get when you use loop knots. And that's why I always use them on top waters. Another time I like to use loop knots is when I'm using a circle hook. And the reason for that is, if you think about a circle hook, it's designed to hook them right in the corner of the mouth. So I want this hook to have freedom of motion to be able to turn or twist or whatever it's got to do to get in the corner of the mouth. So just like I was talking about with the loop knots on the top waters, same thing with the circle hook. I want this to be able to twist and turn however it is in the fish's mouth. I want it to have freedom of motion because the circle hook's naturally going to want to turn and catch the fish right in the corner of the mouth if it's getting pulled out. It's going to naturally want to do that. That's what they're designed to do. So I don't, like if I have a clinch knot tied to it, I don't want to force it any one direction. I want that circle hook to move freely because I, I know that if it's, if it's pulled straight out of the mouth, but it has a little bit of freedom of motion, it's naturally going to catch and it's going to turn on its own naturally. And that's what I want to happen. So that's why I always use a loop knot with a circle hook. I hope that helps you guys, um, gives you something to think about. And like I said, I always use loop knots, especially when I'm fishing top waters. And most of the time when I'm fishing with a circle hook, I use a loop knot as well. So I hope it gives you guys something to think about, maybe something for you guys to try. If you do anything different with loop knots, let me know, be interested to hear and talk about it. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it and I'll see you next time.